We want to welcome everyone today. Thank you for coming out in the hot heat, and we want to, before we begin, if you are a pastor or a minister or clergy, we'd like to take a moment to invite you up to join us. So if you're a pastor or a clergy, please come and join us. Welcome to the Pastoral Alliance, and as you can see from the program and that we run out of, if you didn't get one, raise your hand and we'll make sure Pastor Val gets you one. We'll hand deliver it. That's what pastors do, don't we, pastors? We make house calls. Pastor Alliance for Social Justice and Change, let's rise, remember, and reflect. George Floyd Unity Community Service on today. And we're going to go ahead and begin, and we're going to start with why we are here. Before Pastor Leo Riley, I have a great young man who's going to come first, and he's going to introduce himself to us. I'm Paul Edwards. The issue is why we're here. We're here to mourn and to remember. We're here because of injustice. We're here because of inequality. We're here because of poverty and homelessness. And we're here because we have a dysfunctional political system and a dysfunctional economic system. And like Siamese twins, they share a common bloodstream. But the dagger in the heart of justice is racism. And there's another issue. And I know something about this because I was a U.S. Capitol policeman for almost seven years. The issue is, what happens when the police are criminals? We are here because of individual and systemic racism. We are saved by hope. Be a witness to hope. Amen. Just about one year ago today, a young man's life was taken, which changed our community, our cities, our nations, and our world. We stand before you this day in unity to bring about social healing, social peace to a nation. Last year this time, cities were in uproar. Black Lives Matter, no peace, no justice, no peace. This year we decided to let our salaries speak volumes. So we stand united with the police department, the county, the city, and the pastors of this fine area to show unity, to express healing, and express peace. So today, I pray that in our silence, it speaks volumes. The best way for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. So we stand together as one for social healing and peace. Today we have a very brief program for you today. We will have in place of a poem, a song by Mount Zion Choir. And after that song, we will do eight minutes 46 seconds of silence, just as Floyd expressed, 8 minutes and 46 seconds. Every minute the bell will ring, indicating we have passed one minute. At the end of the 846, there will be three rings. And after that, the next thing you will hear will be another song from Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Choir. Thank you for your silence. Let it speak volumes. God bless you. We'll now have the voices of our Mount Zion praise team. Look around as they're coming and preparing. Remember last year how many were there? 
when the real war and when the fight begins, this is what we see. But how many know that God's a way maker? Amen. How many know that God's a way maker? God is a way maker. And in spite of this, I shared with the news team that God uses all things to work together for his good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Sing to his glory. Thank you. 
mind just giving. Give, let's give some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. He's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. We're now going to have Pastor Boyer who will come with some words of why we're having the eight minutes and 46 seconds. It's already been announced that every minute of the eight minutes and 46 seconds, the bell will ring. This is an occasion in those moments of silence for us to reflect and to consider that if perhaps we pray or meditate, may it be love above our differences and unity rather than necessarily agreement. We shall wait for the chiming of the bells. Amen. The first minute. The third minute. The fourth minute, I can't breathe. Fifth minute, I can't breathe.
the six minute. The seventh minute. The eighth minute, I can't breathe. The last 46 seconds, Mama, help me. of your programs and what you've experienced is the eight minutes and 46 seconds on the back of your program is left every voice and will be led. Please join in.
remiss not to have our mayor of our city. Can you give a round of, of, of praise for our mayor of our city, Mayor Manila, who came all the way back. He was way on the beach. Stop what he was doing. I'm going to say that one more time. He didn't want me to say that, but we're grateful for him to be here. Thankful for him for Police Chief Sean. I've asked uh, Lieutenant, to, he's going to step in. Myself and Police Chief Sean, we had some great conversations. He's been praying together. I'm going to turn it down for a few words from the mayor. me places and asked me to speak when I didn't know I was going to speak. <laughs> so it happened again today. But, uh, I was thinking on the way out here a little while ago that I know Reverend Bowyer, D.D. May, and I have talked a lot about the 1968 Farmington Mine disaster. When it happened, it was a horrible thing. It was a life-changing event for all of us that were around. But you know, there was some good that came from that. And it was years later that uh, you know, they enacted legislation that made it a lot safer for coal miners because of that disaster. So hopefully this George Floyd death, this needless death, hopefully there will be some positive from, from this situation. You know, it cost, it cost him his life. It's a terrible thing, and, and the policeman, the good, honorable policeman, took a hit in this thing also. And you know, the vast majority of policemen, they go out to do their job, policemen, policewomen, they don't know if they're going to come back alive or not. You know, they get, seems like anymore there's policemen getting killed every other day in this country, but, uh, you know, they, they also... Uh, the image of the policeman took a hit in this too, which isn't good, but uh, hopefully, you know, there, there may be some positives come from this years from now, I don't know, but uh, it sure was a terrible thing. I know it was hard for me to watch what happened to George Floyd. It was bad, but, uh, you know, it's nice to see you all coming out today in his honor and the unity of the community. So I'll turn it over to... for civil rights, 
moving things forward through their dedication and their great personal sacrifice. We pray that you will help us to not lose heart, but rather to steadfastly continue the work of Martin Luther King Jr., Medgar Evers, Barbara Jordan, John Lewis, and countless other leaders who have shown us the way to overcome all kinds of obstacles and to remove every barrier that prevents the unity we know you desire for us to have. So no matter how tired we may be, no matter how disheartened we may feel at times, Holy God, help us to say, as the Apostle Paul did, in every way we're troubled, but we aren't crushed by our troubles. We're frustrated, but we don't give up. It's been a long, a long time coming, but we know change is going to come. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Amen.